All right, since I'm out in nature, I figured I'd do a walk and talk for today's video. I hope that's all right with you. We'll do it um, Alex Christophora style. You know, he walks and talks in his videos. And I'm out here at this beautiful Watson Mill Bridge State Park, so uh, why not avail myself of the walking trails? See, behind me, is so it's so pretty here. And I got a bunch of notes with me here because there's a lot I want to talk about. Uh, while we walk, I may have to stop to reconfigure myself from time to time, but I, I keep a little notebook with me quite often and uh, hope I don't get chased by a bear, by the way. And I noticed that Marina had written in my notebook. I hadn't noticed it until I got to the campground. Um, she said this, are Haitian cannibals coming to our southern border? If so, is anyone marketing liberals as for more tasty as being more tasty than conservatives <laughs> classic are haitians coming to the southern border are they cannibals do they know that liberals taste better than, than conservatives i don't know i'm sorry it's it's shaky but it's um you know i'm i'm walking and talking and looking at notes but I've got to talk about this really, truly awful bridge collapse yesterday, or, or, t or this morning rather, in, uh, when was it? This morning, I think, in Baltimore. Bear with me, this trail is not smooth, it's very rocky. I'm gonna probably have to stop a little bit from time to time. Uh, I got up early this morning, of course, as I usually do and I began to see the videos of this just tragic, tragic bridge collapse. I saw this has happened, I think it happened in Minneapolis a few years ago, uh, back. And um, it happened in Florida when I was there in college on the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. It, it's just, it's just awful. Um, and I don't know what happened. I don't know what caused it. But you know, folks, it, it occurs to me that any more in the United States, we almost have to be cynical. And it's that way because all that our government does is lie to us. It's like my default position right now with respect to Joe Biden and his administration is whatever they tell us, as being true, I believe the exact opposite. That's the safest way to be because he does nothing but lie to us. And the safest way for you to be is, or the safest view to, for you to have is just to assume that everything Joe Biden is saying is a lie. So whatever the Biden administration ultimately tells us um, happened at this bridge in Baltimore uh, I will believe the exact opposite. It's as simple as that. Uh, so far, what I've read is the FBI has said there are no apparent signs of terrorism, which leads me to believe that there's a possibility at least that it is a terroristic act. I don't know that. All I know is the Biden administration lies and the FBI lies. So if they tell us a lie, the safe thing to do is to believe the opposite. I got more to say about this, but I got to show you this view. Let me pan around here and let you have a look at this. This is going back upstream. This is a little broad river, the name of it, broad river. You can't believe it, but there's actually people out in the water and it's like 58 degrees right now. But I see people over in the water. Now, let me get back to this bridge. As I said, uh, there, there's a couple of things I want to say about it, but as I said, if the Biden administration and his FBI tells us that it, it is not apparently terrorism, then I am prone to believe the opposite. Now, I'll get back to that in just a minute, but I want to share with you uh, a quote from the Secretary of Transportation. That would be Pete Booty Buddy, Pete, Pete Booty Judge. This is a recent quote from Pete Buttigieg. This is gonna blow your mind. Just listen at this. This is a direct quote. If an underpass was constructed such that a bus 
carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids was designed too low for it to pass by, that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. That's Pete Buttigieg. Please don't ask me to make sense of that because I can't. I don't know what the design of a bridge has to do with racism, but somehow Pete Booty, Booty Buddy found a way to make this or, or to make the construction of bridges all about racism. It's just incredible. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping all around. I'm, I'm, I need another set of hands here. But I want to keep talking about this bridge because there's something else I want to say with regard to whether or not this collapse of this bridge was an accident or whether it was deliberate. Bear with me a minute. I'm walking on slippery rock. Let me get back up on the trail. I just wanted to show you that view. Um, whether or not this accident was deliberate or, um, or it was an accident. I was thinking about this a while ago when I was at, back at the campsite and I was thinking about a recent episode of Joe Rogan and I forget who his guest was, but they were talking about modern cars and how the more modern the car is, the more computerized it is. And uh, there is now apparently a device, I don't know if it's been deployed or not, I believe that it has. Joe Rogan drives a fairly new Cadillac Escalade and he, if I heard him right, he said this is on his vehicle, which is to say that he believes his vehicle has or it does have a kill switch on it. Meaning that somebody other than the driver of his vehicle could shut his vehicle off, meaning that his vehicle has the capacity to be remote control. Do you follow me? And he was saying that the, the, the authorities would sell such a system as a benefit to the car owner. In other words, they would say, well, look, if somebody would steal your car, we've got the ability to shut the car off and stop it from running and stop it from going. And that way you'll get your car back. We're from the government. We're here to help you. The lines that you dread hearing. Now think about that for just a moment. The point I'm trying to make is the technology exists to turn your vehicle, your modern vehicle, into a basically a remote controlled vehicle. Now this isn't science fiction, folks. This is for real. Somebody could actually, your car could actually have the software installed where someone who wants your car to stop running could throw a switch and begin and just basically take over your car. Somebody else could start driving your car and you could be sitting in the driver's seat. You're the pilot of the car. It's your car. It's your keys. You're driving. You're in the driver's seat. You're behind the wheel. But all of a sudden, you lose control of your car and something or someone else is driving your car or shutting your car down. Does that sound far-fetched to you? It is not far-fetched. This is not science fiction. That technology exists, so said Joe Rogan, and I am sure he's right about that. That's not inconceivable. We have remote control toys, do we not? It's very possible, it seems to me, to have the sort of software installed in your vehicle that somebody else, some other entity, perhaps law enforcement, somebody could take control of your vehicle while you're sitting in the driver's seat. Now, why do I bring that up for this very simple reason? I'm not saying this happened. I'm not saying because I don't know what happened. I don't know whether this, this, uh, this vessel that ran into the, the pillars of this 
of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, I don't know whether it had such software, if you will, attached to it or not. I don't know if it was deliberate or accidental. What I'm saying is the, the technology exists that if somebody could do something like this with your vehicle, your modern car, is it not within the realm of possibility that this could have happened to that vessel that ran into that bridge? Which would support the idea that this was a terroristic, quote unquote, event. I'm just saying, I don't know that's what happened. I'm not saying that's what happened, but I am saying it seems plausible to me that something like that could have happened. That's not too far out there. The bottom line is this, Joe Biden is gonna come out with this press conference and he's gonna talk about this thing. And I know Laura Loomer speculated that he's gonna tell the American people that his son Bo was, uh, killed in that bridge accident. Little sick humor, a little dark humor, I guess, but that's what he does. What a sick man, what a twisted man he is. But if Joe Biden comes out and tells us unequivocally, this was not a terroristic accident, then as far as I'm concerned, that is the strongest evidence that it was a terroristic event. I love being out here in these woods. If you could, uh, my camera is not doing justice to these views. Let me whip around here. I'm just kind of following this river here. This is not beautiful. I tell you folks, you need to get away and do this kind of stuff from time to time. It's good for your soul. Clear your head. Um, what do, okay, let me get on, let me move on to this. Yesterday I talked about, let's keep walking. Yesterday I talked about these excessive fines that Judge Arthur Ingeron had uh, doled out to Donald Trump. The fines were in excess, I believe, of $450 million. Just some, it's, it's like clown world. It's just an obscene number. It's just beyond absurd, beyond ridiculous. And of course, uh, Trump uh, um, files an appeal. It gets to the appellate court. And as you know, the appellate court reduced the fines to $175 million. Now, I have maintained on this channel, if you, if you know anything about the Constitution, you know that Amendment 4, I believe it is, speaks of excessive, uh, uh, excessive fines to be unconstitutional. I think any rational American would agree that a fine of $450 million is a bit excessive, no matter if the person in question is a billionaire or not. That's just a hell of a lot of money and that's an excessive fine and that makes it unconstitutional. Well, I found a quote from now deceased former Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg that I believe is really instructive. Now, in my opinion, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was a lunatic. She was an extremist left-wing liberal. Uh, she was from, from the far left. I mean, she was, uh, she was like the polar opposite of Clarence Thomas uh, or uh, Judge Scalia or, or um, Judge Alito or Rehnquist, perhaps. She was a left-wing lunatic. But I found a quote by Ruth Bader Ginsburg. When you're taking instructions from a lefty and they make sense, then it's time to perk up and listen. Listen at this quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg as I walk across this little bridge here. I quote, for good reason, the protection against excessive fines has been a constant shield throughout Anglo-American history. Exorbitant tolls undermine other constitutional liberties. Excessive fines can be used, for example, to retaliate against or chill the speech of political enemies. Can you believe that? That's Ruth Bader Ginsburg who said that. Is that not 
right on target with what Biden's Department of Justice is basically doing to Donald Trump. Now, the question in case, I dropped my notepad. The question in case is in New York, New York with Letitia James and Arthur Ingeron. But this is consistent what's happening to Donald Trump. It is consistent with everything that um, Joe Biden has been doing to Donald Trump. I pointed out the other day how, you know, it, it's unthinkable that an American and an American president would unleash all holy legal hell against his chief political opponent and do everything in his power to destroy him, to weaponize the Department of Justice. Yet that is exactly what Joe Biden has done to Donald Trump. And I pointed out all the other world leaders who do the same thing. Pol Pot, Mao Zedong, Hitler, Mussolini, Castro, and on and on it goes, Idi Amin, and Joe Biden is in that category. But that's a hell of a quote from Ruth Bader Ginsburg. All right, I want to move on to one more thing. Oh, I wish all of you were with me out here in the woods. It is so pretty here. This is therapeutic, man. I got to talk about Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard is a former congressional representative from the state of Hawaii. And she came into office as a Democrat, and she was uh, probably one of the last sane Democrats to hold office in America. She was um, rational. She was a member of the uh, armed forces. I didn't agree with her on a lot of things, but she was not like an uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez sort of Democrat or Nancy Pelosi sort of Democrat. She was somewhat sane, somewhat rational. But she ran into the, the Washington machine when she was in office. And this is, this is the uniparty. They support constant war, constant spending. And Tulsi began to undergo somewhat of a political transformation. I don't know exactly where she is now, but I do know she's supporting Donald Trump for president. She was a Bernie Sanders voter at one time, but she sat down uh, with an inter for an interview with Tucker Carlson yesterday, and I watched this interview last night in the RV in the camper. And among the things that Tulsi said was that she is absolutely opposed to any member of Congress participating in the stock market. She said that is a no-brainer, and she is exactly right. There is no, That's almost like insider. It's not almost like. It is insider trading, ostensibly insider trading. These are people who have access to information that ordinary Americans do not have access to, and she says that that simply should not happen. She never did it, but... I would say the, the bulk of Congress does do that, and she is opposed to it. She said to Tucker that she is a capitalist. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, maybe more importantly, she declared that she is anti-war, and she is not in any way, shape, form, or fashion a neocon. That was refreshing. She said that at one time during her term, they were questioning the Obama administration. She was in Congress when Obama was, in pre was president. She questioned uh, the military about their, and specifically uh, John Kerry, who was the Secretary of State at the time. She was questioning America's military actions in the nation of Syria because she didn't agree with it. She would ask, well, why are we going in and how are we getting out? And she said, she asked John Kerry, do you not understand that if we do something in Syria, there's going to be blowback? And he had no answer for her. Ultimately, Tulsi Gabbard was uh, absolutely vilified by the likes of Hillary Clinton and Mitt Romney who called both uh, of them, called Tulsi Gabbard a Putin ally. A Putin ally. Now, 
I bring up Tulsi Gabbard for this reason. She's part of the scuttlebutt, part of the conversation, part of the speculation that she may be uh, on the list of possible vice presidential candidates for Donald Trump. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about the possibility that Trump selects Tulsi Gabbard? Well, there's a lot about Tulsi that I do like. Uh, she is right on the money when it when it comes to the things I just mentioned. She said she's a capitalist. She's against stock market for those that are in the District of Columbia in Congress. She's anti-war. She's not a neocon. All those are big, strong marks in her favor in my book. However, she is a former Bernie Sanders supporter. And I really wish that Tucker Carlson had asked her in this interview, which he did not, uh, if she now condemns Bernie Sanders' economics. Bernie Sanders, of course, is literally a democratic socialist. That's what he claims to be. That's what he is. And she supported him. And I really wish that, Tuls that Tucker had asked Tulsi, do you now condemn uh, Bernie Sanders' economics, democratic socialist economic? Do you, do you condemn socialism? I wish he'd ask her that. I'd love to have heard her answer. I'll tell you, if Tulsi would come out and do that, if and, I, and she said she's a capitalist, so capitalism, it seems to me, would be the exact polar opposite of socialism, would it not? So I like Tulsi. I, I, I like her. I, I, if Trump did select her for vice president, I think we could do worse. There's certainly other candidates that are apparently being considered. I do not want him to select. I do not want him to select Nikki Haley. I don't think he will. I do not want him to select Tim Scott, Christy Noem. Christy Noem, the governor of South Dakota, where you can't condemn, where it's, it's now illegal to say anything negative about Jewish people. I'm not, I'm not advocating you do that. But this is a free speech issue. And now in South Dakota, apparently you can't say anything negative about Jewish people. What's up with that? I mean, you can say something negative about me. I, I might not like it, but you should have the right to do that. For frick's sakes, this is America, is it not? Uh, I still hope that Trump will select Vivek Ramaswamy or Rand Paul, but I, I gravely doubt he'll select Rand Paul. And I'm starting to think he's not going to select uh, Vivek either. I'm kind of guessing. This is just, just a gut. I'm kind of thinking Trump is probably going to select a woman. Uh, I just hope it's not Nikki Haley. And I don't think it would be. And I hope it's not Christy Noem. I'm not enamored with her at all. If he selects Tulsi Gabbard, uh, I find that palatable. I think I could be okay with Tulsi. But that's just me, right? All right, that's what I got to talk about today. I'm going to have to walk back to the campground and get this video uploaded. But this is so pretty. Just beautiful. Watson Mill Bridge State Park in uh, Comer, Georgia. Hey, thanks everybody for joining me today. I appreciate it. Give me your comments down below about what we talked about and like this video. Give me the old thumbs up. Thumbs up. And subscribe to the old Triple T channel if you have not yet. I would appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed our walk and talk. Trailer Trash Tim, and I'll see you soon.